The next generation combat vehicles are a priority for the Army's modernization plans. At the AUSA conference, we spoke with Major General Ross Kaufman, who leads that team. Take a look. General Kaufman, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Good to see you again. So tell me about the next generation um, combat vehicle cross-functional team. What are you trying to accomplish? What that all is all about? Okay, so I am blessed to lead 30 people in Detroit, Michigan. They're rock stars, all-star, military and civilian, and they're focused on a couple of different areas. Number one, and the number one priority is the optionally manned fighting vehicle to replace the Bradley. Number two, our second priority is our robotic combat vehicle fleet. So think five to seven tons or 10 to 12, 12 ton robots or over 20 ton robots that are modular uh, missions, uh, payloads. So they're payload agnostic and they can do, they can go sense, they can engage, they can detect chemicals, they can do reconnaissance on their own. It's pretty exciting stuff. The third one is a light tank which is uh, going to be in all of our light formations. So think 125 millimeter cannon that can remove obstacles or pediments so that the infantrymen can get on the objective. And then finally, the 113 replacement, which, uh, you know, that 113's been in the, in the force for about 60 years, and uh, it, it served its purpose, but it's time to move on. And so the Amp V is not fancy, it's just tough, and it's able to keep pace with our uh, modern uh, weapon system. So that's that. And then we also have a little piece of Project Convergence. Let's go back to the optionally manned vehicle because sure. that's really interesting that you can have this big tank essentially not have a driver. How far away are we from that? Oh, we're very close. Uh, so when you start talking robotics, um, right now today, most countries that are in this space, and you see a lot about Russia and, and China in this space, let, let me tell you what they can do. They can they can teleop, so remote control cars that, that have been around since we were children, uh, they can do that. They can do obstacle avoidance, so they can use LIDARs and other things to detect obstacles and not drive into them. And then they can do waypoint navigation. So you can say, I want you to drive from A to B to C, and then when you get to C, stop. Okay, That's the common ground that all countries are on today. Uh, the space that we're in, in the competition, and I won't, I'm not going to tell you where we are in this space because it, it is sensitive, is the autonomous package. So when you talk about it, on-road autonomy, that's really hard. But there's set rules. There's stop signs. They all look alike. There's lines on the road. But when you start talking off-road autonomy, the, the machine doesn't know if it's a puddle or a lake. Um, LIDARs can be detected by your enemy. Um, is there a obstacle there that's that uh, is going to get caught up in your wheels well a human would instantly know that but the machine doesn't so we have to go through trial and error training algorithms and and uh, that's going to take some time we're not going to be fully autonomous uh, off-road for several years and uh, so but it's exciting it's an exciting space and it's going to change the battlefield because it, it's going to expand where you can have Robots go make contact with the enemy, which reduces risk to uh, our forces and gives us decision space. Tell me about your strategy for fully electric vehicles and why you would want to do that. Okay, I would absolutely want a fully electric vehicle. Uh, as long as you can charge those batteries in the same time you can fill up a tank of gas. And we're not there yet. That's important. Right, so <laughs> I, uh, what, right now hybrid is great because I can charge, I can, I'm self-healing. I can charge the batteries and I have a motor when I, if I get the batteries out of juice. Uh, but you'd want the, the uh, fully electric because it's silent on the battlefield. There's no engine noise. Uh, it's good for the environment. It uh, allows you to move very quietly into the flank of your enemy and put yourself in a position of relative advantage undetected any army in the world would want that. So th these are some reasons why we'd want it. But it, it, it needs a little bit of development to get the batteries charged fast enough or uh, replaced fast enough to make it worth our while. You once told me that if you're not excited about robotics, then we can't be friends. That's right. Why are you so excited about robotics? Well, first of all, it's reducing the risk to our soldiers. And I love soldiers. Uh, so if we can reduce the risk to our soldiers, uh, that's one piece. Second. We can now do things that we couldn't do before or without adding risk. Like, 
currently, if you had your scouts out in front of your formation and the enemy was coming, well, you had a decision to make as a commander. You could pull the, you, you need to decide, what, am I going to leave them there? So now they're effectively behind enemy lines. Or do you pull them back and lose your coverage? Now with a robot, I can leave my sensors forward with both air and ground unmanned vehicles. I can track the enemy in, and now I can make decisions and make hit him or her deploy faster and then put ourselves in a place of relative advantage because the robots. Um, and that's just one example. But it, it's, it is absolutely going to change the, the geometry. It's going to change a lot of things on the battlefield. And so, yeah, if you don't like robots, we can't be friends because that's the future. I understand that Project Convergence came about from a conversation that you had with General Murray at Futures Command. How so, did that come about? So uh, what we wanted to determine was if space, air, and ground sensors could identify vehicles by type and geolocate them and then have a brain in the background uh, pair those targets with, with shooters to reduce the time it took uh, from minutes to seconds to engage and destroy targets on the battlefield. So when uh, we started down that road, I briefed General Murray on December 23rd, and he, he was all in and said, okay, student body left, we're moving in this direction, and uh, Kaufman, you got the lead? And, and we all, all the CFT directors, all the PEOs, all the science and technology advisors locked arms and we accomplished something that had never done, been done before. We had closed the sensor to shooter timeline to seconds on the battlefield, which is really amazing. And now this year's team that's leading that, led by Toby Magzik, Colonel Toby Magzik down to JMC, uh, Lieutenant General Richardson, they are just taking it to the next level. It is really exciting stuff. All right. Well, General Kaufman, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.